In 2006, the Football World Cup took place in Germany. Fraka, a 21-year-old nursing student, spent the afternoon with her mom and roommate at a restaurant. While there, she received a text from a friend and made plans to join her and others at an Irish pub called the Old Triangle, located in downtown Paderborn, to watch the game. Her mom dropped her off at the pub around 9 p.m. and during the football match, Frock exchanged text messages with an acquaintance until her cell phone battery died. She then borrowed a battery from a friend, who later insisted that she returned it before leaving. Around 11 p.m., Frauka bid farewell and headed home. It is assumed she walked, as she reportedly had only about five pound on her. It's also noted that her house was approximately about one mile away from the pub. The exact route she took remains unknown, as no one saw her after she left the pub. Her roommate Christo asserted that she never arrived home. Then, around 12.49 a.m., Chris receives the following text message from Frauke. I'll be home later. The match was fun, not versus England. Love you, see you later. The message originated from Nieheim, a town located 35 kilometers away. This was strange because it raises questions about how Frauke managed to recharge her phone and travel such a distance without access to a car. The next morning, Frauke failed to attend the nursing school at 8 a.m., prompting her classmate to contact her roommate, Chris. He then informed them that Frauke had not returned home, leading him to inquire at local hospitals. On that same day, Frauke's mother reported her disappearance to the police. Over the subsequent days, Frauke made several brief calls to her roommate, Chris, using her cell phone. Most of these calls occurred in the evening, during which Frauke spoke vaguely and evasively. The call history went as below. The first call was on June 22, 10, 25 p.m. from Hevelhof, which is 16 kilometers north of Paderborn Center. Frauke. Hello, Christos. I just wanted to tell you I'm fine. Chris. Hey, where are you? When are you coming home? Frauke. Please tell mom and dad I'm fine. Then she hangs up. Chris found it odd that Frauke used his full name when addressing him. Additionally, her voice conveyed fatigue and distress. Then on June 23, 11.04 p.m., Frock sends a text and later calls from Duren, which is six kilometer northeast of Paderborn Center. The message states, I'll be coming home today. Currently in Paderborn, love you. Frock's brother Frank then calls Frock after Chris receives the text. Frank, where are you? What are you doing? When are you coming home? Frock, I'm coming home not too late. I'm in Paderborn. Don't ask, I will be coming home. On June 24th, Chris receives another call. Frauke, I'm not coming back too late. I come home this evening. Chris, are you hurt? Frauke, no, I'm in Paderborn. I'm in Paderborn. I'm in Paderborn. Then on June 25th, Chris receives another call as well. Frauke, coming home today. Chris, are you in danger? Frauke, no. Chris, why didn't you come home yesterday? Rocky, I can explain that to you. Chris, where are you? Rocky, I'll explain when I get home. Then on June 27th, Chris receives yet another phone call. Frocka, hi Chrissy, I'm fine. Chris, where are you? Frock, I can't tell you. Chris, come home. Frock, no, I can't. Chris, but why not? Frock, I can't tell you. Chris, are you held against your will? Frock, Yes. No. No. Chris. Are you afraid? Frock. No. Chris. Who's with you? Frock. I can't tell you. Chris. Are you tired? Frock. Yes. Very tired. Chris. Do you know that the police is looking for you? Frock. Uh, yes, I know. Chris. How do you know that? Frock. Uh, I've been gone for almost a week. Chris. But why have you been gone? Frock. Uh, you know that, Chris. Chris. No. Did you meet another guy? Frauke. You know that I wouldn't stay away for a week for another guy. You know me. Chris. Karen is here with me. We are all worried about you. Frauke. Are mom and dad also there? Chris. They were here. Frauke. Tell them that I love them a lot. Chris. When are you coming back? Frauke. I don't know. Chris. Why didn't you come even though you said you'd come home today? Frauke, I'll explain later. Chris, 
Should I come pick you up? Braca. No, that isn't possible. Chris. Can we meet somewhere? Braca. No, that isn't possible. Chris. Where are you? Brock. Mom. Chris. Where are you? Brock. Mom. Chris. Where are you? Brock. Mom. Chris. When are you going to get in touch? Fraka. I don't know yet. Chris. Get in touch at least once a day. Brock. I did that the other days. Chris. I was really sad that you didn't get in touch yesterday. Brock. Yes, I know that you've been very sad. Please give Karen the phone. Karen then takes the phone. Brock. Please don't ask too many questions. Karen. Are you afraid to come home? Brock. No. Karen. We'll leave the flat and nobody will ask you what happened. Come back. Braku. That's not possible. I'm still alive. Karen. Are you with one or more persons? Braku. Please don't ask. I would like to be there with you. I would like to be home. Chris then takes back the phone. Chris. Get in touch at least once a day. Braku. Yes, I will. Ciao. Talk to you soon. That would be the last phone call they ever received from Braku. Then, on October 4, 2006, while exploring a wooded area in Lichtenau, a hunter unexpectedly discovered skeletal remains that was later identified as belonging to Fraka's. Forensic analysis confirmed her identity, revealing that she was still wearing the same clothes as the day she went missing. Notably, her mobile phone, handbag, wallet, and wristwatch were conspicuously absent. Due to the extent of decomposition, it prevented the determination of the time and cause of her death. Investigators speculated that she might have been abducted after leaving the pub and potentially held captive in Nieheim. The origin of the initial texts. Despite an extensive inquiry involving the questioning of over 900 individuals connected to the victim, no motive for the crime has been established. The initial investigation yielded a list of five suspects, all of whom were subsequently exonerated after providing alibis. It's been 18 years now, and there have been no new leads or hints as to what happened to Fraka Liebs after the 20th of June, 2006.